Hello, everybody, and welcome to Back and Forth. I'm your host, Gecko Man, and sitting beside me is our co-host, Rogue Gambit, the man who knows something cooler than magic. It's math. Feels weird, but I'll allow it. All right, are we ready to get into our top five Marvel Cinematic Universe <laughs> moments? You sound a little too excited over there. <laughs> yeah, so I have to tell you something. Is it something bad? You know how good? two episodes ago we counted down our top five Batman movies? Yeah. And how I told you it was all one of the hardest things I've ever done. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Is this harder? This was so much harder. <laughs> like, I came up with five. Okay. Like, right off the top of my head. And then I couldn't put, I just kept switching the, way, the rank I wanted them all in. Then I just thought of so many that could take their place. And then I tried to do, you know, my little like cheat things where I'm like, instead of doing just my top five, I'll do one that fits this category, one that fits, and I tried, that didn't work. Oh my goodness. So, <laughs> well, if you want to know as well, I had a bit of a trouble with doing my top five as well. Yeah, I've got a list, but it's um, depressing. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, anyways. All right. Uh, how do you want to do this? You want to do um, five five four four three three two two one one or something? Yeah, let's just go hit it off right. one at a time for e- for each section. Except we're not starting with one. Okay, you you understand that? You'll go first because <laughs> I have a bunch. So I figured if you did one, I could just replace one with something else. All right. Excuse me. All right. <laughs> makes me a little suspicious. <laughs> um, all right, then for my number five, it is the moment when Captain America is alone. In Endgame, facing against Thanos' army. army. Wow, I thought that was going to be higher. It, I thought it was going to be higher, too. It, it was number one on my first writing of the whole list. <laughs> but then I was like, no, these moments here are way better. <laughs> yeah. Um, I almost put it in my top five. Really? But since you took it, I didn't. <laughs> 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 I, yeah, I know. I've talked about it so much. Yeah. It's it's a great moment in the whole MCU. Like I love Captain America. He's a he's a great, mm-hmm. great, great character in the MCU. I don't know how many times I yeah, have to say a, great. <laughs> he's great. His that like culmination of his great moments that have led up to this great moment is very great. So he him standing there, I just love the shot. Oh yeah, and the pan of the camera, and then the zoom out, oh. and then and then the whole fight. Yeah, that Even, ensues. So yeah. good. And yeah. then, of course, on your left. Oh, yeah. Like, and, is my and, number five moment. Yo, know, it's your number five. When Falcon says, on your left. Really? Yes. That, oh, man. That's like, that's been that. This is good. This is a good, good, good top five so far. <laughs> yeah. That's why I said it's like earlier I told you it's kind of an end game because, you know, it's also in. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. Anyways, I, see. Um, I do that a lot in this list. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it... Uh, well, well why, why, do you, why do you like it so much? Like, what's so... Well, it's calling back to, you know, one of my favorite movies. Oh, yeah, true, um, true. Or my favorite Marvel movie. Um, but it, I'm assuming this that scene, though, in that movie is not your favorite scene. I believe we no. talked about, about it no, when no, we were no. renting. So, yeah, but... It's just like it. I really like the moment because, um, you know, Captain America feels so alone in that moment, which is why your moment make is so good. Yeah, like. Um, but so then when you hear, you know, on your left, which then just like, of course, you're already crying, but then you're you just crying. get all the feels <laughs> from Winter Soldier and like the, uh, you know, Falcon's gone. But now yeah. it's there, and so you get like oh, everybody well. coming back, and just that moment of them all coming back that ensues after that. Um, but yeah, just that call back to, of course, him saying mm-hmm. it, and then him getting it said to him. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's, um, that's why I like that moment so much. I can understand that as well as if you think about it. I'm going to go a little just to touch off track here, but that's fine. Is because before that we know that they already brought everybody back, and so right. which makes the moment. Because they just pull you, like, like pull you down this hole of like he's alone. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. That's what makes yeah that moment so good is him standing there, feeling all alone, broken shield, <laughs> hammer in oh. hand, and like I can take him on alone. <laughs> yeah. All oh, right. What's man. your number four? All right. I don't know how you might like want to like throw something at me after I say this. Okay. 
Fantastic. My number four is the moment when Winter Soldier first shows up. It's a great moment. I was debating between Winter Soldier beating up Captain America, and I decided, no, that moment's not as good as this moment. Like, when Winter Soldier first shows up, you just yeah. get that music. As you've said countless times when we've talked about it in our Marvel ranking. What does that music do in that movie? Do you remember? <laughs> does it build? <laughs> Yeah, it builds, and yeah. we just see, we just see, we start with his feet, right? I was like, again, I yeah, so we first see his legs as he's walking up, yeah. then we see through the um, windshield, you see oh, his yeah. blurry form out in the distance, and it zooms in as he raises his, the gun, <gasps> fires the yeah. disc. It's just a good moment to have for, yes. for an entrance. It's like, it is amazing. Of course, you know, you always have those other entrances of just explosions and stuff. Right. But this entrance was just quiet and just like so good yes <laughs> um and yeah like just the cinematography and the sound just coming oh, yeah. together to create that moment so good no oh. um and just like the desperation that nick fury's feeling too like oh. he's just trying to get out of there you think he's finally gotten out right and then boom gets yeah. hit with the big baddie marvel has a tendency to just like strip you of all like <laughs> yes that i mean that's what makes like their great movies so good is the fact that they can, um, they're not even twists, but they're like just plot twists. So they're like, uh, they, they make you think one thing and then just like, yeah. nope, we're, yeah. they haven't won yet. They yeah. haven't, they aren't alone. They do have friends, you know, whatever it might mm-hmm. be. Speaking of which, oh dear. that goes right into my number four. Wow. Is this going to be like the perfect top five where my stuff goes right into your stuff? <laughs> Maybe. Um, we'll find out. I don't know what the other ones are. Another twist when this is the moment when Thanos says, I am inevitable, snaps his fingers. Oh. But then, no, Iron Man has them, Infinity Stones, and yeah. says, I am Iron Man. <laughs> says, That's so good. That's my number four. Told you they do be a little a little on tear jerky moments here. Yeah. Uh, and then again, once again calling back to the first time he says that, right? Yeah. And the first Iron Man movie. And then, you know, <laughs> they keep thinking about his daughter. <laughs> oh man, yeah, like him. It just you just tear up because it's quiet and then it, you, the Iron Man grabs it and it's just like Oh, he he didn't do it, and yeah, then, you think they've lost? You like, wait, what are they gonna do? And then, boom, Iron Man. And okay, this is something I don't know if I've ever told you, but I'm I I've said even on this podcast that I'm not a big Iron Man fan. Yeah, but his arc in Endgame is so good, <laughs> and just like the culmination of that arc at the end of where he's finally learned to sacrifice himself. The arc yeah. that they started back in iron man one and they talk about in avengers they talk about it again in age of ultron yeah and then in infinity wars he won't do it and then he finally will do it at the end of endgame so good Mm -hmm. yeah like and he also had so much to keep him there yeah his daughter finally yeah he had a daughter now he uh pepper pepper um uh, spider-man peter parker (laughs) Um, yeah and then he also had the rekindle ship of his friendship with uh, Captain America and all that. So yep. it just, it just like, you know, so heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Number three. <laughs> let's, let's go before we start, you know, really tearing up here. All right. Number three for me is Spider-Man homecoming. The c- in the scene where they're in the car. What moment? The moment, moment when Vulture figures out he's Spider-Man. Okay. Such a good moment. Yeah, I almost put this one in my list, um, but I just kind of narrow it down to a moment in that scene. Like that whole scene is just too good. There's a couple There's a couple of those that I almost put in, but I was just like, oh, there's too many good moments in the scene. I can't narrow it down, so I decided not to put any of it yeah. in. But yeah, such a good moment. Yeah, and it, it wasn't like a simple like, um, like a Tobey Maguire where it, it, there was like a – a noticeable scar or scratch on him that would be like, Oh, it's there. It was like, he's putting all the pieces together. Yeah. There's all these things that make so much sense. And it's like, 
he wasn't there at the monument. Yeah. And it's just like, as you like figure it out. Cause like, you know who he, you know who both of them are. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and as they're figuring it out, you're just like, Oh my goodness, what is going on? They're going to like, are they actually going to let him figure this out? And then like the show, then the course of great camera work where they're showing his eyes in the mirror, looking oh. at Peter Parker, such a good shot. <laughs> yeah. And then mm. you're, you know, he knows. And then, also with the whole stoplight red to green mm -hmm. is showing he just figured it out right and there as i said i think i've said this before on the podcast but um blanking on her name oh, oh uh, uh Sp <laughs> <laughs> we're forgetting his name her name uh spider-man's date yeah <laughs> Uh, sh how she like brings them out like right like yeah. you're like so invested and she'll just like say something that has nothing to do with yeah. what they're talking oh. about and just brings you out and like it's that stoplight <laughs> moment when this light turns green and she's just like uh dad you know light's green oh. and you're just like oh yeah it's like i was a jump scare you just wow oh man just, just breaking talking about the tension. it i'm like getting tensed up over here just yeah. thinking about it like it's a good scene very good for scene. sure well that leads really well into my <laughs> number three <laughs> what did i say we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Spider Man, my number three is when Spider Man hugs Tony Stark. <gasps> In Endgame? I don't feel so good. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that was my number three. <laughs> Sorry that I'm bringing the depressing list. I swear it's not this depressing the rest of the way. I'm so crying over you. But, anyways, yes. That that moment when, like, you so you it starts out right when I told you disappears first, and like you go through like those characters disappearing, and then it goes to Tony Stark and Spider Man, and you're just like, what? Like you're just it's just like a whirlwind, and you're just like, who's gonna disappear now? Yeah, and you see and him walking towards him and give him the hug, and you're just like, no, <laughs> I cannot be Spider Man, yeah. and then. Oh my god, it's like, so well acted by Tom Holland. Oh, just yeah. like literally um what's the word? Uh doing it on the spot. Um, oh yeah. Making up some of those lines that he says there. Just wrenching your heart out. <laughs> it's wrenching my heart out right now. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, we don't have to talk about that anymore. Well, <laughs> uh, just really fast. I think it's even more memorable. Because, too. That's yeah. what I'm looking for. It's more memorable because you spend so much time on Tom Holland. Right. Mm -hmm. And and just like their their story together builds so well in that in yeah. Infinity War. Um, that, yeah. All right. All right. What, well, that's your number two. <laughs> <laughs> well, then. My number two is, my next two are going to be from No Way Home. Okay. So, my number two is the moment when... Peter Parker sh shoots his web at Green Goblin in the apartment. Oh, okay. And, that's a really good one. And he's like, that's a good sense. <laughs> and, oh, just like a, just like that moment of him just like realizing something's wrong mm -hmm. and just walking through and you get that amazing shot of just him. Yeah, we, I mean, we talked about it a ton when they did yeah. a break of our baby roof. You can see that in mm -hmm. our... Uh, on um, any of our podcast platforms or uh, YouTube, we've got yeah. our full No Way Home movie review, and we talk about this scene in depth because that apartment scene and in leading into the yeah. fight is so, so good. One of my yeah. favorite and scenes ever. And yes, that moment when he realizes his spiders, his Peter tingles going off, <laughs> he, he knows that something's up, and you don't even, like, you don't even I don't know. even know what he's sensing, you know, yeah. and they do such a good job to build that, and it all leads, and then he turns, and you're like, what's going on? And then he flip, sticks yeah. his hand to a uh, uh, dummy, idiot? Uh, to the, whatever, the robot, the, dummy, the, the robot arm. <laughs> dummy, I think is his name. Yeah, and like, and then just that slow movement of, um, why am I forgetting his name? Um, of green of green goblin green Willem goblin Defoe. willing to foe just that slow moment movement of his head because oh, i like that, that. and just like, like his just like, like the <laughs> eyes and you can totally tell that it's green oh, goblin it's not uh, oh. norman osborne at that moment oh it's so good just shows how good of an actor he is oh all right <laughs> well oh um, my god <laughs> this does not lead well into mine but um, I'll try to segue it. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> yes, that's a great moment with Spider Man. Um, moving since you know all mine have basically come from the same two movies, we'll go back to Infinity Wars. <laughs> <laughs> and man, a lot of them are from Infinity War. I yeah, I could I almost I literally making this list. I almost said you're. I'm going to make the whole list without using Endgame or Infinity Wars because I literally could have used all five of them from either of those movies. There's yeah. so many incredible moments in them. Yeah, I... But <clears throat> we're going to go with another tier tier <laughs> Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it better not be what I'm thinking of. <laughs> um, No. It's um when Groot... No, no. ...grabs the hammer. Not when he okay. says... I almost put when he says I have Groot with... She's saying I father too. Because <laughs> I almost joked that she's saying <laughs> to Rocket. I almost put that one in there. Um, but no, I have when Groot grows up, you might mm-hmm. say, in that one moment. Yeah. Grabs Thor's hammer. Love that scene. Love again how it calls back to Thor one, right? When Thor's dying and mm. he needs the hammer. He's seen worthy in the first one. And this one, it's almost like Groot is worthy, right? Like Groot's been the one who's been arrogant, just like oh. not caring this whole movie, right? And Thor's been like, he's the one trying to find a way to beat Thanos. He finally, you know, they get to Nivedalir, they build the hammer, but he's dead. No, I didn't make that word up. All words are made up. And, <laughs> you know, uh, Idris, Idris, that's the name, right? Uh, uh, it's like, we need a handle. Where's the handle? And Tree, help like, me. And Groot's just like, okay. I'm going to grow up now. <laughs> and he grabs that hammer, chops his arm off. Oh my gosh. It's a great yeah. moment. Yeah. That's um, a really good moment. I do like it. It's not that whole scene. Uh, so yeah, I almost picked bring me Thanos for this as well. Oh, so bring good. Me Thanos is a really <laughs> but good I was scene. like, that's a little too, you know, as you can tell, I like to pick the subtler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, like uh, that moment for me isn't as big as like the moments I have or as some of the moments that you've recently said, um, I, not recently, but well, it is recently. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I can completely understand though. Cause it is, you, you like Thor as a character a lot in a lot of these movies. So I completely understand that. Um, ready for my number one? Nope. Because I do not know what I'm going to pick for my number one yet. <laughs> so <laughs> go ahead. It is the moment. It's no oh, way home. Oh, again. Yeah, I know exactly what your number one is. I've known this for before we even did this. Yes, it's the moment when you hear Green Goblin laughing as he comes up. Can the spider come out to yes. play? Oh, I love that moment. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I, I almost put this one in my top five, but I knew you were going to pick it for number one, so I decided not to. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's funny is, like I said, I was going to put that Captain America moment in my number one. Yeah. And then my number two was going to be the Statue of Liberty moment mm-hmm. with Green Goblin. But then I was like, no, Green Goblin's way better, in my opinion. Like, Green Goblin in this Spider-Man movie, he is so good. And we've talked about like 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 we said earlier. We talked about this in depth in our pod, yeah. in our previous in our movie review podcast. Yep. And it's just like because you think they've won for mm-hmm. now. Na- like you think you, they've won. They think they did it. It's and all then, winding down. And then you just get that echoing yep. <laughs> laughter and oh, yeah, as he comes in and flips everything on its head and we see who the true villain comes and then we get the reveal too right in that moment of what he's gonna look like and you're just like oh my goodness he looks so oh good. yeah yeah and oh i love that <laughs> mm-hmm. um all right <laughs> so i guess i have to say my number one here it better be good it better be good i'm expecting it to be really good <laughs> so uh <laughs> no no Mick, can i guess what movie it could be from sure winter soldier i'm thinking it's got to be from winter soldier so i really wanted to pick a moment from winter soldier of course my favorite movie um i I wanted to pick of course the introduction of winter soldier but i knew you were going to put that somewhere in yours so i decided to not put that in it um i really wanted to pick the fight scene that's my favorite fight scene in the mcu but uh once again I couldn't really pick a moment in there and like, it'd be hard to describe why that's would be my favorite moment. Um, and then I really wanted to pick, I'm with you till the end of mine. Of course. Oh, that, that's a good moment. That is a but good I moment. I just couldn't, I Ooh. just couldn't pick anything from winter soldier. 
So I decided to get another tearjerker. Oh, no, don't you do one. that. And it was the moment when Doctor Strange looks at Tony Stark and holds up his finger. <laughs> Why did you have to pick that moment? <laughs> because it is the like culmination of everything that has led to this literally one moment when he holds up one finger for the one timeline that he saw and that was the one time that Tony Stark decided to sacrifice himself. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> over here. <laughs> Sorry guys, the mine was so depressing. I knew it was going to be a little bit uh, on the sadder side. But yeah, oh. that is I, I like I just yeah, that it was my favorite moment. Like watching Endgame, I haven't seen it in a while, but every time I've watched it that moment just like is perfect storytelling to me just like calling back to something but also like pushing the movie forward and showing the development of the characters we're both tearing up over here so like it's it's sad um it's beautiful too now if i may real fast before we decide to move on or like anything else part of me wanted to hope you were going to choose a no way home moment I almost did, but I knew you were going to have some in yours. Yeah. And so, you know, I was trying to separate ours a little bit. And well, yeah, it, like I uh, had three, I think, that I almost put in. I had like that I knew you probably wouldn't choose. I had, um, I had when he's on the roof of his school. Oh, another <laughs> sad moment. <laughs> Sorry. I, he just picks the sad <laughs> moments. I picked the, but it, like, but I think I know it, that eventually we're going to do like a top five or top 10 shots. Oh, and I was yeah, gonna yeah. pick one That's of those good, one yeah. of those shots for the shot yeah. top five or ten shots. No. So there's a lot that like I was like really thinking ahead to other things we were gonna do and stuff and like scenes that we might break down and stuff and I just yeah. didn't I didn't wanna like pick any of those and so I was I was trying to find moments that by themselves like just were so impactful so yeah beautiful and that's why i picked the ones i picked but i almost picked some did, did, home i almost picked some winter soldier i almost picking... picked some homecoming i almost picked some <laughs> far from home i almost picked i, I almost picked well you uh, did pick a spider-man moment i will give you I that did. i did and it was sad it was, it's so sad D- did you have any thought of picking aunt may um <laughs> no just because you seem to pick sad moments <laughs> So, I did. I, of course, I thought of that scene, um, but I, I don't know. I kind of thought it was a little too, too easy to pick. You know? Yeah, pick true. It. it is very easy to and pick. I don't think it quite makes my top five. I love the moment, but I don't think it quite made my top five. Like, there's other ones I would definitely put ahead of it, and that's why I didn't choose. Okay. It. All right, that's all I wanted to know. I mean, yeah. I can I can get behind your list. I, I like your. No, list. I think we should do this again sometime. I think we yeah. should do another top five Marvel mo- moments. We might do that when we uh, have a lot to talk about, like yeah. we're about to. Yeah. All right, moving on. All right, so Moon Knight episode well, one. <laughs> Absolutely horrible. No. Um. Well, what do we want to talk about first about that episode? Huh? Like, well, what'd you think? I thought it was really good. Oh dear, you you're you're silent. I don't like that. I'm just (laughs) waiting to hear what you thought. That's all. Well, I really liked it. Probably one of my favorite. Sorry for not interrupting you. (laughs) (laughs) Probably one of my probably one of my favorite things about the episode was I think it was how like throughout the entire episode was mainly I was like looking at every reflection I can find of him (laughs) and just being like, there's gotta be something off about him right there. (laughs) Yep. And I also like the whole time when he's talking to his other halves, Mm -hmm. his other personalities. I thought that was pretty good. And like how he would change personalities through that entire episode, like him just passing out. You had no idea what just happened. And then you can tell he has a gun. (laughs) He's like, yeah, he just did something. What about you? What do you think? Um, a lot of things. <laughs> um. Oh, wow. You're bringing out the big guns. <laughs> I thought that it was spectacular. But at the same time, it disappointed me. Really? Well, it so, is the first episode. like Right. And that's kind of why it 
the disappointed me is as I had stated last week, I was really hoping for them to actually give him a backstory. Mm. But clearly he's already Moon Knight. Yeah. And so there's um not gonna be a real backstory of Moon Knight unless it's gonna be in some sort of flashback, which yeah, if they do, a, I'm scared they're gonna do a flashback. I think in but, probably episode three the, the, they'll do some sort of when he maybe, finally meets Layla that you're gonna like. Yeah, maybe, maybe I could also see it as as yes, it could be a flashback, but I think it could be in a flat a flashback, kind of a different flashback, like as if someone's talking over the flashback. Right, I don't think it's going to be like a full flashback. I don't know. It might yeah. be, but it, I definitely think it'll be more of a, um, yeah, like him just talking with Layla and her saying what happened and then him remembering becoming Moon yeah. or something. I, um, so, but I absolutely loved a lot of things about it. I really like the story telling that they do where you're like following, you know, just little old Steven going around, um, and like his interactions with everybody. Oh yeah. Um, I really liked the villain. Oh. Um, I'm blanking on Arthur. Arthur, yeah. Oh man. I um, I think Ethan Hawke was a really good choice to play him. If I may say, just those first moments in the very on that episode, the opening scene of him just doing all that stuff, yeah, and then putting the glass in his shoes just made me cringe. Apparently, if I remember correctly, Ethan Hawke like basically wrote that scene himself really yeah he like he really like wanted to portray like the self um abuse that you know some cult like people do to themselves wow it It is yeah that was bad um i really like the camera work there was some Super amazing shot. There was there. My favorite shot, I think, was when he was in the uh, museum at the end, and there's this really cool shot where it shows him clutching his bag, and he walks forward, and then the camera just drops, like really suddenly drops behind a oh. uh, a display, and so all you can really see is his head. Like it just like cuts off so much of the screen, and like. It was so, especially because he's like being hunted at yeah. that point. It was so just like, uh, I don't know if they were trying to like put you in the, uh, in the shoes of the creature hunting him. Yeah. Or what they're exactly trying to do there. But it was really just, it's just a super cool yeah. shot and super cool uh, way of building the tension. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course in the car chase, there's a couple of really cool shots. Oh Yeah. Um, and I generally don't like that, like stuff where they randomly go into slow motion and everything, yeah. but it was beautiful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, go ahead. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, like I said, I loved a lot of the times when he's like changing personalities and all that. Yep. I, lo- I loved a lot of that cause they don't even show it cause they're right. leaving you in the dark about what's going right. on with him, which I actually liked a lot of, um, but now if i'm correct here i think those were two different voices two different personalities talking to him yeah. throughout the entire well, episode i don't think it was two different personalities i think for the most part it was Conchu talking oh and then when he actually like talks himself it's steven talking to mark okay okay but there was definitely two different voices two different yeah people it could also be like things <laughs> it could also be like moon knight and mark okay in a way i'm not 100 percent sure I thought that the first one we hear was mr knight uh i'm pretty sure i don't know i think it's conchu you think it's conchu or moon knight was that conchu i'm assuming that was conchu that we saw in the, in the elevator and in the, the elevator in the, and yeah. The, yeah that's what i thought i was like man he looks so terrifying <laughs> he, he looks amazing i i had seen him in the trailer so i knew what he's gonna look like but he still just looked really good um he does look terrifying yeah definitely something i won't be able to sleep to <laughs> yeah, any other thoughts before we get into maybe some um, speculation or I questions did, we i have? thought it was kind of interesting of how they brought how he how they made it made it seem like he was dreaming yeah, I, I couldn't decide how much I liked that. 
I mean, like, like Steven's character um, doesn't catch on. Yeah. Like, I feel like, because, you know, you could actually, if you're there, and if you're actually in a place, and then you, like, do all this stuff, and then you wake up, then you, like, pass out and then wake up right. in your bed, and you think, oh, I was just a dream. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, yeah, I, and, or, or, you know, I slept walked or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, the things like in like they're easily explained away just because of his other personalities, where like clearly his personalities have a lot of control over his body and probably his mind, as yeah. seen in the scene where he couldn't open oh, his yeah, own yeah, hand, yeah. right? Um, so like you can say like, oh, you know, why hasn't he gotten help and stuff? But that's easily explained by like his other personalities don't want him to, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, and stuff like that. So I don't necessarily have a problem with it, um, but there are ju- there's just like the ambiguity of the scenes where he's like trying to stay awake and like falling yeah. asleep. And like, you, it doesn't, it, I think it's trying to put you in a place of confusion. Cause you're, they're trying to make you feel like he is, you know, cause he doesn't get much sleep. And when he does, he's out there as another character, a lot of the time getting beat up. So that's why, you know, says on the phone, you know, I feel like in the morning yeah. I get hit by a bus. I've been hit by a bus. <laughs> um, so like clearly like he's disoriented, he's tired, he's um, uh, confused and they're trying to like make you kind of feel the same way. But it was a little bit annoying that like it was just like shots of him laying in bed and then reading and then laying in bed and then reading and laying in bed and reading and it's just like you don't know like how much time's passing. You yeah, know, exactly. Which is exactly how he fell. So like I get that. Um, but it was a little frustrating at the same time. Anything else before we get into maybe some uh, questions, theories, stuff? Um, so I've got a lot to talk about. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I really liked the fact that this this the bad guy is like so heavily like wanting to do this all powerful beings will or whatever. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna forget the names. But <laughs> Im I, Im Imok? I for, I forget his name. I can't as remember well, the so. yeah the goddess that basically if I if I remember her in my preparation I read a little <laughs> bit about the gods of Egypt if I understand it correctly basically yeah the god this that he's serving is um like basically when you die. Um, they weigh your heart, which is what he was talking about with like, yeah. the girl, right? Like the heart stays in because you have to weigh your heart against a feather, which represents a goddess of something else. Yeah. To justice, the goddess of justice. Mm-hmm. And if it's heavier, then you're like evil or whatever. So then this Enoch, Enosh, Emoch, whatever her <laughs> name is, eats you. And she has a crocodile head. That's why his staff has like the two crocodile yeah. heads on it. And that's why there's crocodiles everywhere and crocodiles. Oh, yeah. Was um, <laughs> or alligators or whatever the heck they are. Um, so I, th- yeah, his plan seems to be something along the lines of getting the, her souls before they actually die. Cause like she's supposed to wait till they die. And then, yeah. And I'm guessing the moon God is like sent by the other gods to stop her or something. That's yeah, why that, I like that, moon Knight's there. That seems to be the main goal of this. Yeah. So in the comics, this Arthur guy is a really teeny little, uh, villain like he doesn't do much he's like yeah if i remember correctly he was like a doctor who experimented on people to like uh get ahead you know uh but he like says you know i only experimented on animals that's how i like got my little i can't remember what he get like some pain medication or something or i don't remember but um but he like becomes super wealthy and well known first it's like a Nobel Peace Prize or something. And then he, then somebody finds out that he actually like was experimenting on people and Moon Knight goes to beat him up or whatever. So he's just <laughs> a little thing, but I really like how they're recreating it. And that's one thing I want to say. Like, I really like how, like I said before, separate it is from the MCU. Like, yeah. Yeah. There was like nothing yeah. saying, Oh, the blip happened or, yep. Oh, you know, Captain America, Iron Man are dead. Right. You know, but like, yeah, it's so disconnected. Yeah, I have no idea what time period we're in. Yeah, exactly. We don't even know if like we're 
we don't know if it's after before yep. we don't know if like maybe this is way way after everything that could have happened already yeah that's going to happen maybe or what which brings us to layla oh yes layla who the heck is layla i have no idea so i have two theories running theories in my head um she had been mentioned in one of the trailers, so I had done a little research already and who she could be. And there's only really one Layla I could think of in the whole in Marvel. It's the love interest, isn't it? I'm guessing she will be <laughs> in the show, but in she, there's no Layla that has any reference to Moon Knight in the comics that I could really. Oh, huh. so either it's just a new character that they're creating that could be their depiction of Marlene, who is his love interest in the comics. Ah, um, which is definitely what I'm leaning towards. I mean, I'm assuming that she is going to be a love interest, right. but so. I guessing she's there to pick. I just want to know why they picked the name Layla. Were they like not wanting? Cause like clearly by their interactions, they have some sort of connection. Yeah. And how many and phone so, calls? Like, I don't goodness. understand why they would just change her name. And yeah. that's why I kind of, got into trying to find a Layla who could be connected. And the only one that I could, like I'd thought of, and then like I read about her a little bit and I'm like, maybe this could be something is Layla Miller. If only I know who that was. (laughs) She's a mutant. Oh, but she never has any connections with Moon Knight. Well, let's also, she, at times was like a mercenary, I believe. Okay. And so since he's a merc, Mark Spector's a mercenary, there could be some sort of connection there. The other thing, did you see the other name that pops up? I did see that. I didn't get a good look at it. I never, didn't, wasn't able to read it fast enough. But I don't, So it was, I, I'm going to forget it again, <laughs> Duchamp, <laughs> which is uh, the name of his... Like, I don't know if he's his best friend, but in the comics, he's like a very close friend of um, Mark Spector's, who's also a mercenary, um, Frenchie Duchamp. Okay. And so that was interesting, a little, little Easter egg that yeah. they dropped there. And Clearly, he's still, if I remember right in the comics, Bushman kills Duchamp. So he's not dead. Or at least for the time that he yeah, called. He, or maybe, you know. Uh, uh, Bushman has his phone and was using it to call and try and get him to answer or whatever. Uh, I don't know. But but anyways, that was a nice little Easter egg. But yeah, so Layla, I don't know. I don't know who she is supposed to well, be, but um, those well, are my theories. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if I could say something, th- see, with Moon Knight being so disconnected from the MCU, this kind of gives them a chance to like bring in a whole lot of new characters, like right. I said before. Um, so this may be the chance for mutants to pop up. Yeah, this is true. But then it could be something that will... I'm not mean, saying Moon Knight I, won't be connected to the MCU. Like he is, he is connected to the MCU, but he isn't connected to the MCU. If that makes sense, yeah. Um, I I like the theory, I guess. But you my the problem <laughs> with it is, like, I don't see the point. Yeah, I um because I can understand that. Especially with like a so, uh, uh, little known character. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. maybe like if they had been like Gene called her, he called him, you know, and you're like, wait, this, you know? Yeah. Like that would be one thing, but like, just like picking a random character, what they could do um if they're going to is pick a character like that hoping nobody um you know expects anything and then they could have where this dude uh villain arthur was like experimenting on her and that's how he like uh oh dot 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 um in that case they might be no I don't think they're going to be doing that. Um, 
and him becoming more of like a uh, Mr. Sinister type villain. Um, and, you know, he was <clears throat> experimenting on powered people trying to become more like go to the gods or get closer to the gods or whatever. I don't know. Okay. But I really don't, I just don't feel like they would bring in mutants that way, especially because it like sounds like they're getting really close to bringing them in a different way. Yeah. It's like, why would they like kind of bring them in and then, you know, hit you with it? I don't know. Yeah. 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 I, I can definitely see where you're going with this. Um, well, there is there is one thing I do want to talk about real fast before we go into some more theories and stuff. Okay. Let's just really fast, because, you know, we've already seen it. We've all seen it. We've all seen it. The way, the way he turns into Moon Knight. Yes. And his costume. Yep. That looked so good. So you don't fully see a transition, right? You just, like, could yeah. see the start of it and how he looked afterwards. Um. I don't know how I feel about the way he transitions into Moon Knight, how like the co- the uh, uniform costume works, but it just comes out of nowhere. And right, just, it's cool for sure, um, um, sh- and I love the final product. Like the way Moon Knight looks is uh, so yeah. cool. They definitely did probably some of their best work on this. Moon it's one of my favorites for sure. Yeah, um, yeah, like best costume so far i love the way his hood is and like his hood the way it comes to point how 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 it's so uh, okay this is what i really like about it how it so um realistic looking oh, you know yeah. it doesn't look like cgi you know it doesn't yeah. look fake it looks literally like something wrapped around him right yeah and then on top of that how uh, unrealistic it looks like his hood kind of just coming to a point you know mm-hmm. later on you'll see <laughs> other aspects of it and how like kind of unrealistic that looks and that just like i really like that border between like the reality and like the comic bookiness of it yeah um i think they did a spectacular job mm-hmm. uh, um so speaking of that oh dear <laughs> the creature hunting in there i was wondering about that like so that in the trailer is the creature i was wondering if it was werewolf by night oh i still have no idea (laughs) like you never get a good enough look at it to tell exactly what it is the only good like the only shot i saw of its head it looked more like a crocodile head than a werewolf head so i'm leaning towards it being more of like a the goddess chicks like little minion beard i but i don't know from the shots that i saw of its head it did look more like a human human. yeah i thought it looked like really long it did not look really long to me it looked Um, really we apparently have different (laughs) that's what i said like there's so many and they're all like it was hardly ever standing still yeah it was hard to make out um Um, i definitely need to rewatch the episode yeah same here but yeah i I really want it to be for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Like um, it looks very like, so I'm assuming werewolf by night has way more fur than this creature had. <laughs> Those are the, yeah, you don't really get to, I really like, if it is, I really like the look of like his legs being so like spindly, spindly. <laughs> oh, good <laughs> word. Yes. Spindly. It's actually, I was literally about to say, um, uh, uh, and like how on, unnatural he looked i yeah, guess he did look very unnatural um, he looked like oh what was it he looked like uh this is gonna be he looked like one of those creatures from the one of the scooby-doo movies live action scooby-doo movies i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who have seen it you know what i'm talking about i don't think you've seen it nope <laughs> um <laughs> another interesting thing the villain talks about the voices in his head, right? Yeah, yeah. Like he has voices in his own head, which makes me wonder, especially if the voice he hears, what's like hearing for the most part was Khonshu, if he is hearing the voice of 
Oh, calm, calm, new, whatever. <laughs> we really need to get his yeah. name down. Just Turn write it, it up, put it on the wall. <laughs> um, or if he has another identity like Moon Knight, I hope they don't really go too much that route. Yeah, but that would be interesting if he had different. Well, it, identities as well. So the problem with doing something like that is you just have a just a, another person who's like. Mirror image. Yeah, mirror image. That's it. I agree. I agree. I don't want them to go fully that way, but him having other personalities would be interesting. Yeah, other personalities would um, be interesting. I just, you know, like, I don't know if they were trying to say, like, he just uh, could, you know, see the chaos inside of him, or if he actually, like, was like him in some way. So, mm. um, maybe he did have personalities and he killed them. Yep, yep maybe. Mm, mm, that's something to think about. Um, <laughs> let's not get too dark here. <laughs> I also liked how it bordered between like dark and horror, <laughs> comedy, drama. <laughs> um, that was cool. Yeah, it definitely was cool. Um, it was yeah, a good first episode. It was a good first episode. Like, but it's very different than all the other first episodes too of all their other shows so far. It, it is. It is. Yeah. All, a lot of the other episodes were pretty, like, pretty straightforward, I want to say. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, you had, like, WandaVision that was just, like, uh, straightforward, but, like, didn't give you any information. Yeah, exactly. Just speculation until, like, the very last, well, even the last scene, you didn't really get information. You just were like, wait, 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 what's going they, they on? They gave you more questions than answers. And then you had, like, um, uh, uh, Falcon Winter Soldier was just, like, kind of like backstory yeah you know you just like learned about your characters loki just like threw him into a random situation yeah yeah kind of just like backstory again um what if was just like showing you the world of what if and then uh hawkeye was just i guess it was a little similar but it was a lot more just showing a the backstory of yeah. the character they're bringing in whereas this they're bringing a character didn't really give you a backstory but just like kind of threw you into the story started uh yeah just confusing and then yeah. then by the end you did get like a, a, some answers yep. like enough answers mm -hmm. left yeah. enough questions oh yeah um all right hey uh what shall we ex what should we expect from the show here all right yeah we can kind of move into uh upcoming by talking about the next episode here so next week i feel like we're gonna get a lot more questions next yeah, week. yeah definitely i feel like um, we're gonna probably learn a little bit more about uh mark but we're probably gonna get like his maybe a third identity or something so yeah get introduced where you still have questions about what's going on mm -hmm. um like, we still don't for for viewers who like haven't read the comics and stuff. We still like they don't. We don't know like if if he has other personalities or if he has right. or if he just has these two personalities that seem to fight <laughs> over the control. So kind of interesting. Kind of mm -hmm. interesting. Um, but yeah, uh, what do you, do you think that this? Now here's a question. I know we talked about the bad, main, this bad guy yep. being like possibly like the main kind of the kind of the main bad guy but not the, at the same time not the main bad guy because it's probably the god that he serves yeah i don't um, know i think he'll yeah basically be the main bad guy yeah do you well here's the question if it is so if you got to think about it, you said it, you said in the comics he was pretty small do you yeah. think they'll kind of make him small just by throwing him away at soon i don't know i think he'll be like the main villain okay um, but I don't think he's going to be like super, I hope not. I hope they're not going to like make him super powerful by the end or something. No, oh, please not. Like he absorbs the, the, uh, power of the God or whatever. But I do think like the God is still like the villain too. You know? Yeah. Um, I do kind of think the next episode's going to like start where this one left off. Cause like at the end, right? Like Moon Knight's just like walking out of there. Well, he was just kind of standing there, but yeah. <laughs> He's walking. Yeah. Okay, we could say walking. <laughs> he literally got up and started walking at the camera. I don't know. <laughs> we could say that. <laughs> but like he hasn't left the building, right? Yeah, so and, and there's probably the, more. Still, 
the at least main bad guy in the building. Yeah. If not other people, which he seems to always have people with him. So I'm guessing there'll be other people. But I don't know. I th- I'm kind of torn between either it picking up right where it left off and he's still having to like get out of there and still Moon Knight because he did kind of give control over to Mark, right? Yeah. So I mean, he might get a lot more Mark, a lot less Steven in the next one, right? Yeah. If he has full Maybe, control. You know but what? But they could also start the next episode with him just waking up again. Oh. And I'm kind of torn between which one. Well, what if happen. they did this? How about, think about this real fast. Let's, let's, what if they started the next episode going back in time, but we're seeing it from Mark's, Mark's perspective? Oh, that would be interesting. <laughs> that would be interesting. Like, yeah, every time the blackouts happen, it's going back to Steven and we yeah. get to see all of. That would be an interesting. I definitely think they'll probably eventually do that. I don't know if it'll be next episode. That would be interesting. Mm-hmm. That would now that would be. Kind I feel of a, like we would have ended on a lot more of a like pivotal moment if that was going to be the case. Yeah, you know? but I mean, I be, felt like it was a pretty pivotal moment. <laughs> I mean, sure. I mean, it was it was faint, you know like we finally see Moon Knight type of thing. But yeah, maybe maybe. Um, <laughs> any any other speculations that you think? Do you think we'll actually maybe see them see him talking with? Conchu. Eventually, no. Nah, I don't think the next episode. You don't think the next episode? No. I definitely want to see him like talk with Conchu. Like, yeah. I really want to see that. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's on my it's on my vision board. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think that kind of does it for Moon Knight. What else is upcoming? Anything for Star Wars? Um. Well, something came out recently. And I need to look it up again, but it is something about Bad Batch. And I so nobody cares. <laughs> Zip it. Um, apparently, there's a dis- there's apparently the release date has been uh, released, announced, announced. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So apparently, it has been so. It has been announced that it was coming in spring of this year. Wait, what? I thought it was November. Well, everybody was saying it's coming out spring, and they, they I believe they said it was coming out spring, which confuses me. I know, which is crazy, but then they, I think they announced the date as November. Like, okay. Well, know this, so... Hold on here. I'm just going to lose my mind. Um, so Bad Batch, what I was saying was why I thought it was November was because that a lot of people assumed it was like rumored to be November. And I think it is confirmed to be like November-ish or something. So that's kind of the only thing for uh, Bad Batch. Just, just that. Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know. Same trailer, same stuff. Still people being angry about a certain character. I do hear rumors that there might be, they might change the character, so they might fix it. Don't know. Um, of course, Mandalorian season three in winter. No. <laughs> uh, and then Andor. Okay. So, yeah. Nothing nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Um, yeah. Coming out sooner than that? Just uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, May twenty fifth, and nothing like with like six days away. Nothing six days away. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you're talking about. You're not talking about Morbius. No, that's one day away. Yeah. What are you talking about? Lego Star Wars. Oh yes, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Goodness, yes. Lego Star Wars. How is that six days away? Today is the 30th. It comes out on the 5th. Six days away. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. How about Marvel? Let's get on to Marvel for a change. All right. Well, uh, tomorrow, <laughs> Morbius goes out. Yep. Uh, We're going to go watch eyes. that. Uh, we will release a instant judgment on the tube. YouTube and um, I'm sorry. TikTok. Did you just call it the tube? It's a it's a quote. Kid looks good on the tube. I don't know this quote. Dark Knight. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Joe Gordon says it when he's arresting Falcone. Oh. Anyways, um, 
<laughs> uh, 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 now I lost my train of thought and thinking about Dark Knight. Um, instant Judgment. Instant on Judgment will be coming out on YouTube <laughs> and um, TikTok. And then we've got what? Nothing. Nothing. To continue uh, on. <laughs> Multiverse of Madness coming out in May. Thor: Love and Thunder July. But we still haven't got a trailer for Thor: Love and Thunder. It is now of all the MCU movies. It is the closest we've ever been to the movie coming out with no trailer being released. Really? And I know they're still doing like reshoots and stuff. Apparently those reshoots are in the trailer or something. I don't know why they can't just release a little teaser trailer for us. I yeah. don't know. But um, something must be going on where they... um, if, I mean if it gets if it gets if it gets like another week, I'm thinking they're gonna move back the release date. Oh my like, goodness. I don't know. It's just what is with so them moving close. so many so many movies back? I, like I told you, it's No Way Home. No Way Home forced this because No Way Home brought in all these characters, and now they're trying to bring more and more characters and cameos and other things. I'm sure of it. I've okay. been doing so many reshoots. Well, like um, just we have Morbius, we have Doctor Strange, we have possibly Thor: Love and Thunder. Um, there's one other I can't think of right now. Wakanda Forever? Yeah. Wakanda Forever, yeah. Just, yep. ah, ah, ah. <laughs> They'll come. They'll come. All right. Uh, Pretty soon yeah, we so, just won't have movies left. Yep. Um, that'll be a sad, sad day. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's all that's really coming out. Uh, can't wait to play some Lego Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Keep an eye on that. Um, oh, Actually, you know, what? we'll save it for save it for a little later on. I think. All righty. Well, then we will see y'all next week. We don't want to talk about upcoming for back and forth. Upcoming for back and forth. <laughs> what are we doing? Um. Well, for next week, I think we're just going to be mainly talking about Moon Knight. Um. Question is, I think we're going to be doing our Star Wars top five star wars uh, scenes right moments moments that's right moments scenes will come later <laughs> yes scenes. top five star wars moments there's only one good star wars moment oh my so goodness. <laughs> my list will be easy <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be number one number two number three number four number five darth vader <laughs> that's right i am your father <laughs> all right um so yeah we got instant judgment coming out that'll be coming out next week and then or we also might do another instant judgment of a movie coming out this next month. Oh yeah. Ambulance. Yeah. Um yeah. got Jake Gyllenhaal, so I want to go watch it. Yeah. And well then that know, means I have to come with you. By Michael Bay, so I don't want to go watch it. <laughs> oh <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> Anyways, um and then we'll probably have some gameplay coming out and such. You've got yeah. gameplay coming out the wazoo, so Yeah. Alrighty. Well, yeah, so if you just all want to know real fast, we do have our back and forth gaming channel all set up if you just want to go on the YouTubes. Yeah, on the YouTubes. <laughs> uh, just yeah, just down below all the videos, and you should just see back and forth gaming, little purple bee. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah. See y'all next week. Don't put yourselves inside a box. <laughs> <laughs>